Hi, my name is Patrick Reagan. The CompTIA's a Introduction to Computer Components series shows you the various components that make up a computer and how they are connected together. This video is the prelude to the future videos of taking a computer apart and putting it back together. This video introduces various components including cases, power supplies, processors, motherboards, and RAM. This presentation is throwing a lot of information at you. While I put some pauses in the presentation, you should consider pausing the videos to study the slides in the accompanying pictures. This slide shows the computer without the case. The power supply is shown in the far left and the motherboard is on the right. The processor is in the center of the motherboard. However, you cannot see the processor itself because it's covered up with a large heat sink and fan. You also see the RAM and you have multiple expansion slots with one expansion card inserted into the expansion slot. Ports that are part of the motherboard are found in the back of the computer. You can see that the power supply has the larger 24 pin ATX power connector labeled as P1 power and a smaller 4 pin power connector labeled as P2 power. This motherboard has four SATA data connectors with one connected to a hard drive. There is one SATA power connector connected to the drive with additional power connector available for a second hard drive. This slide is showing the same setup, but from different angles. You can still see the power supply, processor, RAM, expansion slots, and expansion card. The ports are a little bit more visible in the second figure. But if you look closely, you see that there's the video ports on the expansion cards, which tell you that the expansion card is a video card. From the back of the computer, you can see the ports. You can see the four USB ports and an Ethernet RJ45 network port. On the motherboard, you can see that you have a DVI-D and a VGA port, which are used with monitors, and you have a colored audio ports used with headphones and microphones. The video card includes a display port, HDMI port, and a DVI-I port. Don't worry if you don't know what all of these are. You're just getting started and you have to start somewhere. This video will go into a little bit more detail in a little bit and you'll have more videos in the future. The case is the external box that holds and protects the computer components. In addition, the case limits the flow of radio frequency interference, or RFI, from the computer. Since some of the interference can be broadcast as radio and television signals, a computer, or any electronic component, can interrupt radios, televisions, or navigation equipment used in aircraft. The case may have additional wires used to connect the USB ports in the front of the computer to the motherboard and to the various LED lights found in front of the computer, such as the power LED and the hard drive LED. Some cases may include additional fans to help keep the computers from overheating. Remember, too much heat is not good for a computer. Most desktop computers will usually have a power supply in the case. While power from the socket is AC power, this power supply has to convert the AC power to DC power. Power supplies usually include a fan. The secondary job of the power supply is to pull hot air from inside the computer and blow it out through the power supply vents. This is the reason that we have to make sure that the vents are not covered up or blocked when the computer is running. Some power supplies have a voltage power selector. 115 volts is used in the United States and 230 volts is used in European countries. Some computers, including mini computers and laptop computers, 
will use a power brick to provide power to the computer. The power brick has the same function as the power supply, which is to convert AC into clean DC power. To power the motherboard, you connect a 24-pin ATX power connector. However, the power supply may also have a 4-pin or 8-pin connector for additional power and or a 6-pin PCI Express power connector for high-end power graphics cards. The power supply may provide Molex connectors for older hard drives and SATA power connectors for the SATA drives. This slide shows how the power connectors are connected to the motherboard in the SATA hard drives. If you look closer at the motherboard power connectors, the corners of many of the pins are clipped on the one side and a latch is used to prevent accidental disconnection. While it is difficult to see in the picture, the connection on the motherboard has a lip on which the latch locks onto. This will help guide you on which way the connector connects to the motherboard. This slide shows you a closer look at the SATA power connectors and shows you the legacy Molex power connectors which has four pins. For the SATA power connector, notice the small L groove which is used to make sure that the SATA connectors are connected properly. The Molex power connectors also has clip corners on the one side. Question. What is the primary purpose of the power supply? Answer, to convert AC to clean DC power. At the center of the computer, logically speaking, is the microprocessor, sometimes referred to as just the processor, central processing unit, or CPU. Everything is built around the microprocessor, which is usually a single integrated circuit or chip. It can retrieve instructions and data, do mathematical calculations and comparisons, logical decision making, and output the results. Because of this, many think of it as the brain of the computer. The processor is plugged into the motherboard. While there are many factors and characteristics that determine the performance of a processor, two common characteristics is the processor clock speed and the number of cores. Clock speed, also referred to as the frequency, is the speed at which the microprocessor executes an action such as read a memory address, put a value in the register, or do a single calculation. The clock is used to synchronize the various components of the computer. A computer works by many on-off switches made of nanotransistors. For a transistor to switch from on to off, or off to on, takes time, although this time is measured in microseconds. Processor transistors can turn between off and on billions of times per second. If a circuit tries to read a signal while it is in transitioning between on and off, the circuit gets confused. The clock cycle, or tick, indicates when a circuit is supposed to do its next action so that it does not read a circuit that is in transition from on to off or off to on. You can think of the clock signal as the drumbeat or stroke command used on a ship or boat that has multiple rowers. The drumbeat or stroke command tells the rowers when to row so that all rowers row together. If they did not, the ship or boat would not go as fast as it could and conflict can occur as the rowers hit other oars. Clock speed frequency is expressed in hertz or cycles per second. In 1971, the early Intel processor operated at 740 kilohertz. In 1979, 
The Intel 8088 processor, which was used in the original IBM PC, operated at 4.77 MHz. The first 1 GHz processor was released in March 2000 by AMD and Intel. Today's processors reach 6 GHz or higher. The faster the clock speed, the more actions and instructions the processor can execute per second. So looking at the metric table, a 1 MHz processor is performing action at 1 million times per second. A 1 GHz processor is performing actions a billion times per second. The frequency is an easy calculation as it relates to time. Frequency is equal to 1 over time. For a 4.77 MHz processor, the transistor has to transition in 209.6 nanoseconds. A nanosecond is one billionth of a second. For a 1 GHz processor would be 1 over 1 GHz, which means that the transistor has to transition within one nanosecond. For a 6 GHz processor, the transistors would have to transition every 0.17 nanoseconds. Today, most processors are multi-core processors that actually contain multiple processor cores in a single package. Multiple core processors can run multiple sets of instructions at the same time. Today, many programs are multi-threaded, which means that the program is divided into multiple sets of instructions that can be executed simultaneously. For example, when you're typing in Microsoft Word, you have one thread that is processing the data that you type into the document. You have another thread that is constantly checking your spelling, and another thread that is formatting your document. In addition, newer processors are 64-bit processors, which means that the processors can execute 8 bytes of data in one instruction cycle, instead of the 32-bit processor that can only execute 4 bytes of data in one instruction cycle. In other words, the 64-bit processor has the capability to do more work during each instruction cycle. However, when a programmer is creating a piece of software, the programmer has to take advantage of these capabilities. The most common processors are from Intel and AMD. The processors are kept cool with a heatsink, thermal paste, and a CPU fan. A heatsink is a piece of metal that has extra surfaces to provide a larger surface area so that it can passively dissipate heat faster. The fan is an active solution that pulls and blows hot air off the processor. The CPU fan does require a power connection. The thermal paste is to provide a better thermal connection between the processor and the heatsink so that the heat can be transferred away from the processor. The motherboard is also referred to as the main board or system board. It is the primary printed circuit board located within the PC. The processor is plugged into the motherboard, which has allowed the processor to talk to other components in the computer. You can consider the motherboard as the nervous system of the computer. The motherboard also contains a processor slot, clock generator, a BIOS chip, CMOS battery, RAM slots, expansion slots, various ports including USB and video ports, drive connectors, and power connectors. A printed circuit board simplifies the inside of a computer. It has thin metal traces embedded, which replace having thousands of wires inside the computer. In addition, it is cheaper to produce a circuit board than to solder hundreds of wires in a system together. It should also be mentioned that wires are fragile compared to the motherboard and would be impossible to troubleshoot. Today, if wire traces go bad on the motherboard, it is cheaper and simpler to replace the entire motherboard. In fact, the motherboard is considered a Field Replaceable Unit, or FRU. Read-only memory chips, or ROM chips, contain instructions and data. Unlike the contents of RAM, the contents of ROM are permanent, so when there is no power, it will still remember its own content. Firmware is the ROM chips with program instructions and data. Every PC has multiple ROM chips. On the motherboard, you will find a system BIOS. 
the video ROM BIOS located on the video card or on the motherboard if the video card is built into the motherboard. Other expansion cards may include ROM chips. BIOS is short for Basic Input Output System. It can be thought of as the instincts of the computer since it has basic instructions on how to control the many hardware devices including access to the boot disk and it controls the boot process. Today, the system BIOS is part of the system chipset. The BIOS setup program is a program that you can configure the hardware of your system, including which drive to boot from or to boot from the network. You can also enable and disable features and devices that are included with the motherboard. A chipset consists of chips and other components on the motherboard that allow different PC components, including the processor, to communicate with each other. It consists of the bus controller, peripheral controllers, memory controller, clocks, and timers. Your motherboard also includes the CMOS battery. Since BIOS chips can save and remember data without power, CMOS batteries are probably needed to maintain the date and time of the computer when there is no power to the computer. Today, the chipset, which includes the ROM chips and BIOS, usually requires a heatsink to help keep the chips from overheating. If the chipset drivers are not included in the operating system, you'll have to download and install the chipset drivers for optimum performance and to see all the devices included in the chipset. Random access memory, or RAM, is considered the primary memory and is the short-term memory of the computer. It is called random access memory because the information accessed non-sequential. The processor can access one memory address and then jump to another memory space. It provides temporary storage space for data and program codes that are currently being used. While the memory is one of the fastest components on the motherboard, it is considered volatile since it loses its content when there is no power. The amount of memory is a major factor in determining how fast your computer will operate. RAM is added by inserting the RAM circuit board into the RAM slots. Latches on the two sides will release the memory chip and lock the RAM chips in place. The memory chips usually have one or two notches to make sure that the correct RAM chip is inserted into the memory socket. If the notches do not line up properly, the RAM chip is not made for the specific motherboard you are using. Today, RAM packaging consists of dual inline memory modules or DIMMs and small outline dual inline memory modules known as SO DIMMs. Desktop and tower systems will typically use DIMMs as shown in the top two figures. SO DIMMs are about the half the size of a DIMM, which can be found in laptops, some mini computers, some office printers, and networking devices. The SO DIMMs is shown in the bottom figure. Throughout the years, there have been DDR, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, and DDR5. While DDR5 was released in 2020, currently today's standard is DDR4. Since the various versions are not forward or backward compatible, it is fortunate that each version has different pin counts and or different notch positions. Today's DIMMs have 168, 184, 240, or 288 pins, while the SO DIMM uses 144, 200, 204, 260, and 262 pins. Question, what is the brain of the computer? Answer, the microprocessor, also known as the processor or CPU. Question, what chips allow the processor to control the other components? Answer, the chipset. Question, what are the two most common packages used for RAM? Answer, DIM and SODIM. DIM. 
In summary, the case is the external box that holds and protects the computer components. A power supply converts from AC power to clean DC power. Power supplies also provide cooling by providing a fan. Everything is built around the microprocessor, also known as the processor and CPU, and is considered the brain of the computer. The processor kept cool with the heat sink, thermal paste, and a CPU fan. The motherboard is the primary printed circuit board located within the PC is considered the nervous system of the computer. The printed circuit board has thin metal traces embedded which simplifies the inside of the computer. BIOS is short for Basic Input Output System which can be thought of as the instincts of the computer since it has the basic instructions how to control the many hardware devices including accessing the boot disk and it controls the boot process. A chipset consists of chips and other components on the motherboard that allow different PC components, including the processor, to communicate with each other. Random access memory is considered the primary memory and is the short-term memory of the computer, which provides temporary storage space for data and program codes that are currently being used. RAM packaging is DIMMs and SODIMMs. Thank you for watching this video. The next video for the CompTIA's A Plus Introduction to Computer Components series is Part 3, Drives, Expansion Options, Ports, Video, and Networking. Thank you.